I burn for you. They almost cast me as the Jew, clearly you could see from that performance, but they went with reggae for some reason, I still don't understand why. <laughs> Hello Vanity Fair, I am Nicola Coughlin, and today I am bringing you through some Bridgerton slang, which hopefully I know, and if I don't, we'll both find out together, and isn't that exciting? First one is Viscount, not Viscount, like Anthony Bridgerton is a Viscount. One step above a lord, but not as good as a duke, so that's why they're all excited when Daphne gets married to the duke, because it means she's slightly higher position in society. I've also known how to say this word for a really long time, because there used to be biscuits called Viscount biscuits, and I mean biscuit in the cookie sense. There's a lot of definitions happening here, even beyond Bridgerton, food definitions. Who knew? Tan. Tan is short for the bon ton, which in French means good manners. It's like high society. They were sort of the, the celebrities of their day. They were the people that the gossip was written about and they used to like chill with the queen. She was their girl. Landau. A Landau is like a fancy horse-drawn carriage. It's funny, the carriages in Bridgerton, obviously they're real, you get into them, but it's super like uncomfortable to ride in a carriage because it's all the cobblestone streets and you're just sort of jiggling all over the place and you know, your wig's gonna fall off. A spinster. I mean, look, I can't believe we still have this term. Men have bachelor. A bachelor's cool and he can go and he hangs out with his friends and they go on holiday. But if you're like, oh, me and my spinster friends, people will be like, oh no, no, that's not, oh, that's terrible. No, a spinster is just an unmarried woman, but it's like such a mean, gives me like Rumpelstiltskin vibes. It's We need a new word. We need like hot single bitch. Let's get rid of spinster. Come on, it's 2021. Dandy. I don't know why I'm doing this in a weird Maggie Smith voice. It's a dandy. It's like a fashionable guy. He's into his clothes. He's a bit of a row. He's kind of sexy, exciting. He knows what he's about. Second, so I didn't learn this from Bridgerton. I learned it from Hamilton. You have really made me annoyed and therefore I'm gonna shoot at you and you're gonna shoot at me and that's how we will solve it. Okay, firstly, who came up with that? It's a really dumb idea, no offense. But then your second is the person who like brings your pistols. They are like the ones who are in charge of executing your estate. And in Anthony's case, during the duel, if he had been killed, Benedict was his second, so he would have taken over all of Anthony's responsibilities. Also like, you're just annoyed. Why are you making me do all these things? And you're like, dowager. Dowager is like Lady Danbury. She is like a wealthy widow who's inherited her husband's estate. They were nearly the women in society that had the most agency because they kind of had their own money and could do what they wanted to do and didn't have to marry some other weird dude. So being a dowager was actually a really good time, let's be honest. When you burn for some and it means you just like really have the hots for them. You're just like all about them. And after the pandemic, there's gonna be a lot of burning for people. Do it carefully, that's all I'll say. Courting, so courting is essentially dating. You know, there's some parts of courting that I'm like, bring it back. You know, when you go to the ball and then the next day they show up at your house with flowers and a puppy. Where did that go? Why is it like Tinder nowadays, swipe left and right? No, bring me a puppy if you are interested. Adopt, don't shop also. Your grace, that's how you would address a duke or a duchess. Would you address a viscount like that? I don't know, but we're heading into season two, so I guess I'm gonna find out pretty soon. <laughs> that's quite good. The Dark Walk. So the Dark Walk was, Foxhall Pleasure Gardens was south of the River Thames in London. And the Dark Walk was where ladies of the the night would go and sort of apply their trade. A lot of young men spent their time there, but if you were a lady caught there, a lady in high society, you were in some serious trouble, which is why Daphne Bridgerton in episode one, she gets really scared that she's near the dark walk because she would be ruined. Miniatures, I'm pretty sure they were created for Bridgerton. So they're like a mini deck of playing cards with paintings of all the eligible suitors. So it's like you kind of knew who was single. It was like social media before social media. And it'd be like the Duke of Tiddlington. And he has a lot of land and you want to spot him at the ball later. And then he wouldn't look like his miniature and he'd be like, oh my God, I got catfished. And it was a whole thing. The drawing room. So the drawing room in modern parlance, I would call it a sitting room, like your living room. Those Regency ladies, they weren't kind of allowed to do anything. So it's where you like sat and read, just where you chilled with your homegirls, basically. Leading strings. So to my best understanding, leading strings were like, you know when you see like a little toddler on a walk with their mom and they've got like those little straps around their shoulders so they don't like run away. That's leading strings. So it's a lot, it's um, implied a lot in Bridgerton. They're like, oh, him is barely out of leading strings. And I was always like, I don't even know what that means, but I do now. Life is a learning process. Mm, make haste, make haste means hurry the F up. What are you doing? You're wasting my time. I have somewhere to be. I'm a busy lady. Hurry yourself up. Simpet and minced. You're just like, oh, I'm so cute. I'm just like in front of the queen. What, I don't even know my life. What's going on? And I'm just like a cute girl and I know nothing. 
Kind of like that. It's like what Daphne does in front of the queen and she nails it. She's like the diamond. Promenade. Promenade means to walk. In Bridgerton, it's like you're walking for the display of the suitors. You're trying to you're trying to catch a husband when you're going for your promenade. And I mean, they just dressed up in those times. It's not like us now when you look for your promenade in sweatpants. It was like the full look. To promenade with your ladies. Just going for a walk. Second born, I mean, it's the Prince Harry thing, right? It's like the first son has all the responsibility, has to manage the estate, has to do what he wants. And the second born can go and marry like an American hottie and go live in LA basically. So like Benedict Bridgerton also can go and be, you know, an artist and live this avant-garde life. The first son has the responsibility, the second son has the fun. To sire an heir, you have to make a baby that will take over your estate. I feel like that was a very, PC way of describing that. Someone has to be the next Duke of Hastings after Simon. Gotta make an air, gotta make it happen. Swoon! Swoon! That was your best flirting technique in 1813 London. It's just to like fall on the ground. And you know what? Yeah, why not? All the other girls are just walking around and they're like petticoats and you're like, no, I'm just gonna fall to the floor. It's a Regency death drop is a swoon. Debuting. To debut meant that when you were like 16, 17, you were like, you are now old enough to get married and bring some money in. So we're just gonna throw you out there in front of the queen and all those dudes are gonna look at you and then like one of them can marry you. It was a bit weird. I mean, if I had to actually be presented to like Queen Charlotte IRL, I would simply swoon, darling. Snuff. So snuff is like tobacco that you can inhale. I used to live in Oxford and I remember there was a snuff shop and it's really stinky and I am not into it, but Queen Charlotte was super into it. People thought she was doing something illegal, but she wasn't. It was simply some snuff. The modiste. So the modiste is like the dress designer. All your clothes would be made from scratch and if you were one of the bon ton, you would be going to get all your designs made and you'd want to look like the flyest girl at the ball. So you need a really good modiste and then she's going to have lots of sewers underneath her that are going to make the garments that she designed. So she was like the uh, Louis Vuitton of the Regency era. A rake. A rake is like a bad boy. He's going to ruin your life. He's going to be like really into you and then not text you back or not like send you a wood pigeon or like what, the, you know, whatever the equivalent was. He's an F boy. Regency the F boy. Simon, the Duke of Hastings, classic rake. A duke. A duke is he's nobility. I think he's like one under a prince. If you've bagged yourself a duke, you have done well. Some serious houses you are getting. You are kind of one of the cool ladies in society. You're gonna get invited to all the good parties. Oh, a diamond of the first water. I thought this was made up for Bridgerton. It wasn't, it was an actual thing. A diamond of the first water is just the most gorgeous girl in that season. So in our season, it's Daphne Bridgerton, who's elegant and flawless and perfect. As we know, there's a lot of pressure when it comes to being the diamond of the first water. I just wanna be like the garnet or the opal of the first water. That's kind of my level that I could cope with. The social season. So the social season was where the high society families would come from their country homes in the spring and early summer to London to get their eligible daughters married off into other wealthy families. They all sort of intermarried <laughs> one another. Whether that was a good idea or not, that is what they did. Skyed. Skying is about art. You would go into a gallery and the really good pieces are at eye level. And then something that's mm, not so great, you're just gonna put it up as high as you can. It's just like color up there, but we don't need to, we don't need to worry about it. Set his cap. So to set your cap at someone means like, that's the dude I like. Penelope has set her cap at Colin Bridgerton, even though Colin's like, what? He hasn't, he hasn't noticed yet. Sadly, she's not very good. Your country seat. So if you are one of these super wealthy families, you have two homes, cause like, I guess one's not enough or something. You've got your, your London house and you've got your country seat. So it's where you would go for your shooting and your fencing. And sometimes you'd have country parties. It's your second house, basically. Okay, a woman's honor, it's her virginity. They were super serious about virginity and you couldn't even like, it's a guy, you couldn't hold his hand, you were in trouble. It's super unfair because the women would get all the hard time about it and the dudes could go around doing what they wanted, going along the dark walk, having the time of their lives. But if a woman's honor was besmirched, she was in trouble. A barb, firstly a Nicki Minaj fan, but secondly, it's like a reed. It'd be like, mm, her petticoats are a little bit crap. That was a terrible barb. I was just trying to think of it on the spot and that's what came out and we just have to accept that. Drool. Drool is like dryly funny. So someone like Lady Danbury who's like super super dry but very very hilarious. They are drool. Dunderhead. In Ireland we were like you Egypt. You're dumb but you're cute and I still like you. It's not like a horrible thing to call someone. It's not the nicest but you 
get over it. Well, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something today and that you are fully prepared to enter the social season for the second season of Bridgerton, which will be coming at some point. I don't know. Wait for Netflix to tell you. I'm not in charge of that. Bye!